somebody said it's one day, one trouble. When any news breaks in Nigeria, some politicians say, don't even worry yourself, to, don't disturb yourself, because within 24 hours, it will fizzle out. Before you know what is going on, another issue will come, and it will be history. But of course, trust the media. At any point when you think it has gone to sleep, the media will dig it up, and then you will know. So, I sit in Lagos and come and insult somebody in Kaduna and run back to Lagos. Probably. We see it beyond the headlines. The name remains is Ahmed Kader. Well, they said, uh, I mean, people who actually think of the country, think of uh, the next generation, but politicians think of the next election. As it is, 2023 is already, I mean, an issue. Ah, you could just call imagine. Some people have not even spent two months on the saddle of leadership. Even though some people have had four years with nothing got in another if tribunal don't take away think of what they will. when you if you wake up in the morning your mind to read we don't know how many people are getting That's the good thing with history. Welcome to the program. Yesterday it was a bad news. It continued today. A deputy commissioner of police. And that man just got promoted just a few months ago to that position. He was assistant commissioner of police uh, in charge of operations, the FCT Police Command. Uh, just recently he got promoted to deputy commissioner of police. Talking about Usman Umar Kau. Uh, if you add uh, Belele to read, that's another name he's known with. Yesterday was mowed down along with a young promising core member serving with uh, channels out the upheavals between uh, the and the members of the Islamic movement, popularly known as Shiites. We are not talking about other number, other members of the IMN who might have been killed in that process. The sustained protest by the of uh, the Shiite, what does what are the issues? We shall be talking about that in this program. The owner of Ife, just a few days back, before his story could be in the archive, the Allah Fior of Oyo, Oba Lamide, Adeyemi, wrote the president again, lamenting uh, strange people, they said, within certain forests within the southwest. Of course, that is even before the uproar of the killing of the daughter of Pa Ruben Fasorenti, who yesterday was laid to rest, died down. So, uh, Alafi's letter to the president is another issue. Then wait for it, the ministerial list. One of my colleagues here said he was expecting his name to be on the list. I didn't see his name. I, I said, don't worry, wait. Uh, the Buhari that we know will take his time. Uh, I don't know how much he knows Buhari because the president said he was going to appoint people he know personally. So those are the three issues we shall be looking at this evening. From my immediate right, I have Isaiah Benjamin, who is the bureau chief of leadership newspaper in Kaduna. Isaiah, good to have you here Thank with you. us. Thank you for having okay. me. Were you the one who said you were still expecting your name on the Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. not to worry. Uh, Koji's election is in November. <laughs> <laughs> probably after the election, probably your name will be that. Okay. All right, Isaiah, good to have you here with Much us. Later. Okay, next to Isaiah is uh, Tunji Oyeleke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just don't know. I probably we are going to get another auto get again from Quara this time around. I don't know. Because the name has made the list that uh, people from Quara are not happy about. Well, Tunji, good to have you here. With us. Thank you very much. For uh, even though you are from Kaduna, you are not from Quara. That much we know. <laughs> All right. Of course, Tunji is with us here, okay. and we have uh, Dahiru Asimkera of Delta coming up again. I'm not going to unveil that name here. Probably uh, who we'll get Ah, uh, Dahiru, good to have you here. Nice it's to meet good you. to be here with Thank us this evening. All right. Well, Dahiru, let me start from you. It started in Kaduna with like like joke. His area to be precise. When the chief gets confirmed of the chief of army. was a different 
a Kaduna State govern, government who said about over 100 people were actually killed and buried uh, in an unmarked uh, grave. But over that period, we've seen this Shiite. Because we are the lost by burnt protest by the Shiite members. I, it's very sad uh, for us as a nation and uh, as a country to have issues that have to do with security. Uh, if it doesn't value human life, uh, like you said, uh, it started from Zari, and uh, it seems the security and uh, the government are not being very proactive to maybe stop it from where it started. Pronzaria, uh, as I said, he was picked up and uh, alongside his wife and uh, some people who I think eventually got a uh, bailout, but the Azazeki himself as the leader of the Shiite and his wife had been in uh, detention for a very long time. And uh, according to the law, this man and uh, his wife should have been taken to court. And uh, they could not do that until when the followers of the Shiite started protesting because of the long silence. Uh, and uh, <coughs> most of them are even saying they don't know where about of, uh, their leader. And uh, I think government gave that uh, room for all this uh, protest. It started like a well, uh, wildfire. Uh, fire. Uh, we even like, saw it in Lagos. So it's quite unfortunate. And uh, what happened yesterday? That situation where this was uh, killed and uh, alongside a promising uh, journalist and. Uh, Government are not being very proactive. This man was, uh, 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 I think, based on the judge, uh, Justice uh, Adewale Kowale. I cannot remember the name of the justice that said that they should leave this no, man bail. on bail. Mm -hmm. And if the, the, the court of uh, competent jurisdiction said this man should be released on bail, okay. I think there's no point of uh, violating the court processes. You understand? So there's the need of the government to sit down, look at this issue critically, so that they can curtail the uprising and the protest. Because we are yet to contain the Boko Haram crisis up to now, and uh, we have so much to contain within the not uh, uh, geopolitical uh, zone, uh, uh, precisely in Zampara. Last 200 people on activity, and most the functioning government. And if is not taking the way shared uh, issue started, it's going to replicate what we had uh, uh, in the in the notice and the Boko Haram to be precise. Because someone was telling me that when they brought Azazaki, uh, I think two three days uh, to court. I think Azai may be there to cover the story. Mm. The man is is uh, not been that uh, strong. Mm. Mm. That he cannot mm. even go uh, to the court uh, room mm. upstairs. He have to uh, be kept downstairs. His lawyers were shuttling uh, from upstairs downstairs to meet him, you understand? And that person was telling me that they helped him to enter his car as they helped him to come out from the car. So my thinking is that if anything will happen to uh, Azazaki, like how it happens to Maime Yusuf, because I think the, the, the situation will go beyond our own imagination. So better for us as a nation, let us sit down. The court of content jurisdiction, there's no pride of holding this man yeah. while the court said you should release him. Oh, Actually, we should be very much proactive <coughs> to put to stop of the, uh, this uh, uh, sustained uh, protest that protest. is consuming mm. the lives of innocent, innocent Nigerians. Nigerians. So, I mean, to you coming to you, looking at this, I mean, even the media age of the president, um, uh, Femi Adeshino uh, was on air on a sister television uh, station this morning. I mean, even before then, Garba Show came out and was justifying. Garba Show actually gave a perspective, saying the federal government has nothing to do with what is going on with Azizeki. It is Kaduna state government versus the Shiite uh, 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 members. Now, again, today, Femi Adeshino came out and said the reason why Azizeki has not been released, the federal government actually appeal the judgment that said it should be released on bail and having this contradiction from the spokesperson of the same president which one for you to this i think late last year yeah uh, the former community
Lime Mohammed was Who saying, is on the list he said, again? why they didn't release Ezeziki? Because his neighbors are denouncing him. So they don't want to release him back to his neighbors. He said it's neighbors. for his own safety. You, you understand? <laughs> so and now we are getting to another two contradictions from the spokesperson of the president. I mean, what, what, what can we say? We've, um, we, we've known several times that, even from the presidency, mm -hmm. It seems like, if you if you remember right from the beginning of this, from, from the inception of this government, there has been that confusion in who is actually the spokesperson of the presidency. Is it Femi Adishino? Is it Gary uh, Bashir? Or is it even Lai Mohammed? Because they all have a way of giving you different perspectives. Contradictory. To, and you get confused the about the issue. The At the end of the day, you just dump the issue once on, on, mm. on one side. I saw the, the statement that was made by, by Femi Adishino, and I was I was saying to myself, the federal the president came out to say that look, he has no nothing to do with this issue. But yeah. then I asked myself the question, who is the federal government? Who is the presidency? Who is the leader of the presidency? That happens to be the president himself. So what is the need for all of this uh, uh, contradiction? Now I will just read a quote of the of the Twitter handle of the president, where he said, um, after commiserating with Precious Uwolabi and also the um, the DCP that was killed, Omar, yeah. uh, Umar, Umar, yeah. he said, let nobody or group test. Uh, doubt or test our will to act in the higher interest of majority of our citizens. And I like to say that if we are continuing to see these issues popping up, mind you, when the IMN protests, if somebody does not die, somebody gets critically injured. injured. Mm. Do we need that? Do we need a breakdown of law and order? going on now for long, not just time, for a very long time. Months. I was saying to someone the last time that was uh, the, the day uh, it was on a Friday, mm -hmm. when no, on the th last Thursday when we were supposed to have that trial in Kaduna here, yeah. and you could understand it, you could feel the apprehension. I mean, we are a bit far away from where the the uh, the, 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 the the trial was to hold, mm -hmm. but we could feel the apprehension the, the from whole, here. The whole Kaduna city center. We ask beyond. ourselves the question, but yeah. why? Why should that be? How, why should one person be so powerful that the whole state can be held to ransom? That tells you that even on the path of the federal government, I am sorry, but there is no sincerity in what, in what they are doing. There's no sincerity. Okay, what are you holding demand for? That, that's it. I mean, Isaiah, coming to you, because we've seen, we, we saw what happened from Zaria to Kaduna, and now a competent court of jurisdiction is saying, release this man on bail. You were at the last sitting where everybody who saw that man knew that, look, anything could happen to this man at any time. Can we say the protest of these people is not justified? Because what they are asking for is legal. To say, release this man on bail, let him go and attend to his health. Can we actually blame the IMNI uh, people by their own protest? Well, uh, thank you so very much. I think uh, my two colleagues have just spoken mm -hmm. nothing but the truth. And you see, it is rather unfortunate, and I actually feel pained with the way and manner things are going in this country. Uh, it is so very obvious that we have not learned from our mistakes of the past. Uh, just like uh, the two colleagues did say, Boko Haram is, a, is an issue that we are still fighting till no. tomorrow. We are yet to successfully contain them. And we knew how it all started. It all started like like a joke, their leader was killed. So he gave us a leader, let's bury him, and they refused and all of that. And today we are where we are today. All right, fine. This one is starting like a joke again. Right, still now, alive. But, yes, and he's still alive. But my pain is, why should a court of competent jurisdiction give an order and sort order is being denied? Now, whichever way we look at it constitutionally, mm -hmm. these guys have a right to protest. Even though we are not in support of the right? violence. At the and risk of sounding like they are spokesperson. Mm. All right? They've been protesting, and the much that we know about their protest is always peaceful. peaceful. All right? But again, when it is becoming very obvious mm. that the, the health status of their health, of their leader is deteriorating by the day, and what they have asked for simply, all right, obey the court order, no. All right, release him to go for medical checkup, no. So what are we talking about? And don't forget that these guys have said it continually that this is going to be a sustained protest. protest. Yesterday, they've been protesting. Yesterday, they protested. As a matter of fact, we were told that about 11 persons were killed. But by the report I got today, 21 persons were killed. As we speak now, they are going to bury them. 
Others were also killed today again in Abuja. So what are we talking about? This protect. thing came out. And the person that spoke to me said, we are still coming out again tomorrow. So they should keep killing us. But don't forget, the one of the videos I watched, they made it very, very clear, emphatically clear, that if their leader, El Zazaki, dies, they will kill the president, they will kill the governor of your state, uh, Kadna state, and they will kill the national security advisor. And you don't dare them when they say a thing like that. Now, the guys that are ready to die, they don't care whoever dies. They said once they are pushed to the wall, and if you ask me, believe me, the way and manner things are going, they are actually being pushed to the wall. It is turning With excessive, excessive force that is uh, being used against them. Life bullet. Now, somebody asked, I asked somebody. Now, the DCP that was killed, I learned he was shot from the back. From behind. It therefore means it's somebody that is close to him. I, I, I mean, building on that, I, and then let me come to you, because this is quite, it, it's disturbing because when we talk about the Shiite members, and this is beyond the headlines, within the military, within every profession they are everywhere. that you know, they are everywhere. you have members That's very correct. of this group within them. I mean, shouldn't the government, the intelligence community, know that with the members of this uh, movement, in virtually every profession you can't think of in Nigeria, it is disturbing, and the government needs to be proactive to ensure that the right thing is done at the end of the day. Because from what we are saying, if a police officer who was leading from the front was shot from behind... So who must have shot him? In fact, somebody has even called for an investigation obviously, of the bullet uh, that killed the GCP I, and the youth copper. Obviously, with I cannot say more than what we have said here. Yeah. As I said, those people started uh, peaceful protests, mm. and we all know. And we, we How did it be you, so you understand? All of a sudden, there's a kind of pushback to exactly. understand. And these people are claiming that they have more than five million uh, followers. Members. Last, uh, I think last uh, last week we were here discussing the same issue. And as at that very time, mm. those uh, shared uh, are holding a protest in uh, Lagos. Mm. You could imagine someone was telling me yesterday or day before yesterday that they are taking the bus to uh, airport in uh, Kano. That he said he saw them. From uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, roundabout, okay, okay. he said the, the the procession is very long and uh, is so, very threatening. So imagine mind. when you push these people to start being violent. You understand the life of uh, innocent people in Abuja has been put to a, a, mm -hmm. a, a very serious danger. Even here in Kaduna, we're not safe. I think we have said it all. Like uh, earlier said, that we cannot say more than what we have said. There's no fright. The court of mm. competent jurisdiction said to release this man on bail. We see it. a situation whereby the, the same government are negotiating with uh, Boko Haram. There was even a swap. So I think swap. So I think one of the strategies of, the the of, the of the can be uh, peace. conflict resolution mm. use diplomatic uh, <laughs> approaches. You understand? Mm. There's no way you can be using force to uh, push people to be very violent because at the end of the day, it costs us a lot uh, uh, more than what we have been imagining. Right. So so just, uh, just to, to add, to, to, just yes. Okay. I mean, I was coming to you. Okay. The, still on this because we've had situations where people are picked up. You are wearing black, and you get picked up by security agents. It happened in Kaduna. We've got reports of that severally. I mean, and we realize now this Shiite guys don't even wear black again. Again, yeah, they start wearing black. And some of us love wearing black and all of you things. I mean, shouldn't the intelligence community be more circumspect at the end of the day? Well, um, the truth of the matter is the foot soldiers of the intelligence agents yeah. are doing their job. Let's be very sincere about mm. that. It's the, the question is, the, the, the information that is gathered, mm. the question is, when it gets to the upper echelon, what do they do with it? Oh, but, but did you what I was saying is that, that is the problem. When you pick somebody who belongs to Izala sect, or the Riga sect. Just because you're wearing black. wearing black. I and mean, spend days in detention yeah, before you discover. I, mean, I, mean, I, under, I, I mean, understand. Wouldn't that actually win more sympathy? To the, to the, to the no, the act. truth of the matter is, mm. as as far mm. as we are concerned, as yeah. far as where we are at today as a nation, yeah. let's be very sincere about it. The IMN have won majority of the sympathy of Nigeria. Absolutely. Which shouldn't be so. Yeah, that's correct. Um, which is unfortunate because right from the beginning, the federal government has failed to deal with this issue diplomatically like that human exactly. Upset. Exactly. Because look at it. Nigerians are killed on a daily basis. What is the best thing that is done? you see a Twitter post on the Twitter handle of the, of, of the president. I mean, a 15-year-old Nigeria was killed, a, a secondary school boy was killed in South Africa the other day. Mm -hmm. That is one too many deaths for another country. 
you so, so you can see how the, the, the response that the Amica, federal Amica, government Amica too, uh, to actually read the riot act. I, I, I mean, Ghan Nigerians are, are being, are being uh, 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 mauled in Ghana. Ghana. You can under, so we are the place, we are the ones where we go out on a daily basis, you say your prayers, oh Lord, if this is to be the last day, then fine. Which should not be on a, norm, on a good day. Which shouldn't be. Well, we said it in Nigeria, we pray over things that we shouldn't even pray. You pray for light, you pray not to fall into potholes. If the potholes were not there, you wouldn't even need to pray in the first place. You pray not to be accosted by armed robbers on the road. I mean, you, you just can go on and on and on and on. But to, to round up on that, Isaiah, we've seen Ezekiel was not just an overnight thing. Ezekiel has been in Kaduna for God knows when. We saw the uh, scotch head approach that Amid Ali, then as the military administration in Kaduna used. Mm -hmm. With the coming of Makarifi, we saw the diplomatic way the whole thing was handled. But whether we like it or not, as key again, the Shiite people mobilized their members in 2015. Even the president of also visited him. That, that, that's what I'm saying. That's the point. So to when did he become bad? I mean, if diplomatically, when that confrontation happened with Chief of Army staff, if the state government had been diplomatic about it, the UT would have got into the state government. Absolutely no. <laughs> Simply no. It's the same way that the federal government was not diplomatic with the issue of Isuf Muhammad. Mm. The, de the then book uh, leader. the leader that was yeah, killed. Exactly. Was it's the same the problem that we are having now, mm. and we are toying about the same line. And it's rather unfortunate. The truth of the matter simply puts, the federal government must find a way to peacefully underline, peacefully resolve this issue. The violent nature and the excessive force that is being used cannot achieve any result. Call them, right. the truth of Call the them to negotiation right. now. Exactly. All right. They exactly. may respond let's, let's, before things get out of hand. Exactly. Right. That's, just let's, it. Let's, That's just let's it. Let's leave it at that. Hoping uh, that the federal government will do what it ought to do to ensure that the daily loss of life is, I mean, from the police, from the ordinary citizen, from the IMN members, who, whatever you say are Nigerian, somebody said it will take a superior ideology to actually win back certain ideologies which you feel it's not right. So. We are all Nigerians hoping that the right thing will be done. Well, still on security. A few days ago, the uh, ONU of FIFA actually visited the president and told him we must actually win back our Nigeria because some people are trying to take it over from us. Before then, you know what happened? The killing of the daughter of uh, the Afeni Ferry leader, pa Ruben Fasorenti, talking about Funke Olakuri, who was yesterday led to rest, unfortunately. Raised a lot of, I mean, you just hit up the polity with front and back, not west, east and west, and what have you, things like that. But just yesterday, day before yesterday, yeah, day before yesterday, the Alafi of Oyooba uh, Lamidi Ademi wrote the president again on the security. And I will start from that again. Ah, Nairu, we've seen what is happening in the southwest so far. It's not even up to, I mean, if you can actually measure an atom of what the north has gone through and still going through. But we see the kind of uh, alarm being raised already by the leadership of the Southwest. Do we actually blame the leadership of the, of the, of the, of the Southwest on the alarm they are raising? No, there's no reason of uh, blaming them. Mm. That shows their security consciousness. As you said, we've been having so many issues, more than what they yeah. started experiencing. Katina on daily basis, on daily killing. Basis, Zampara, everywhere mm. in the north. But one thing that uh, not as pale to do, we don't have unified uh, uh, boys in the north. Okay. And the issue is, those people are very conscious security-wise. Mm. This thing started, we don't know the next big thing. That's the ideology. Uh -huh. So let's find a way to stop it. Before the uh, Alephine's uh, letter, there was uh, a letter wrote by the famous uh, letter writer, mm -hmm. uh, former <laughs> president uh, Obasanjo, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a kind of serious uh, issue here. There, the issue is let's just look at the content of the letter, the message. Not but the message, people no. dwell much on, on the, the message, credibility yeah. of the uh, messenger. Mm -hmm. But actually, you could see. A few days after that letter, a lot of security uh, fallout has been uh, uh, prepared. Uh, the Shiite and other things, Zampara and uh, Kasena are present. So the, the Southwesterners, I think they are very much for active in the issue of security. security. So there's no issue of blaming or head up. Let's inculcate the kind uh, of uh, approach. Mm -hmm. And in the whole uh, essence, the government that is responsible uh, to protect the lives and properties of the citizens should work up as a nation, not as a zone. Because mm -hmm. the issue is we've been battling with security issues 
uh, from banditry kidnapping boko haram we are having a uh, issue right now what do we have really have a workable and effective security well, architecture to curtail all this that, that we don't have let's <coughs> go diplomatic to solve all this security oh, all right so, so Trinity, coming to you can we say the leadership of the southwest must have kept quiet for too long because while this thing was going on in the north we saw when boko haram started there were people who said oh is there a problem? Not them, them. Not them, them, and all the good things <laughs> like that. <laughs> Until when Boko Haram members were being picked up in Lagos, <laughs> in Odo, in other places, and what a beauty, in Portaco, and what a beauty. The same thing when this kidnapping, cattle rustling, I mean, all sort of banditry, and what a view. It seems people in the South were so comfortable keeping quiet because it was not happening then. That's part of the fact that this is a Nigerian problem. Do you think they've kept quiet for too long? And now yeah. is the case of when when it, when it you are being pinched. Pinch. You, uh, you, uh, I started laughing because mm. you actually made good words on my mind. Okay. But I'm not going to put it that way. Mm. At the same time, I have to put it that way. Mm. You know, the truth of the matter is, people understand that it's in the time of peace, you prepare for war. war. Mm. Now, when you see someone's house burning mm. on your streets, Prepare water for you have to prepare for yours because it, it's it's really try to put out that it's, fire it's, so it's, that it's it exactly so it, it, uh, it, uh, it sends a kind of warning signal to you mm. so you also have to be very very uh, uh, careful I have to be watchful of whatever has must have caused that fire okay I need to avoid it and that is what I'm sorry to say the Southwest did not do at the same time I want to ask a question at what point did having strange people become a security threat? At what point? Well, it depends so, on kind of strange. <laughs> e e exactly. <laughs> Is it because of the the uh, so-called herder issues that we are having? Mm. And all of, which, for me, by the way, it is, that's a, that's a very political problem. It's not even a societal problem for Polit me. Politicizing it is a, the problem. It is, yeah, exactly. So it is good that at this point, even before the problem escalates to an unbearable level like the North is currently experiencing, mm. it is good that the Southwestern leaders are beginning to wake up and to realize that, look, we need to do something very quickly. And it's good because if you look at it, one of the biggest problems that we have been having societally mm. is the fact that we don't have that form of communal living anymore. Mm. It's as if Isaiah is Isaiah on his own. God for I am on my own. I mean, you mm. come to Kaduna here, you see, you see the high fences that people are building around He's their houses. Aware of dogs. Uh, you know, be aware of snakes. Well, we, are we, are, we ask the question that, okay, what are you keeping something out or you are keeping something mm. in? You understand? So it is good that finally they are, they are talking, they are speaking, but we need to be very careful because we don't want to continue to escalate a problem. I mean, it's a problem when you read these letters and you read things, you read words like anarchy, war. I don't want, us to, I don't want us to get to that point because if we continue going there, surely we will get there. All right. As I come to you, because from the perspective, uh, I mean, some of these letters and whatever, we're not even talking about the national problem. It seems regionalizing national the problem, problem, politicizing it, profiling certain ethnic groups. Uh, somebody was talking about some Yahoo Yahoo boys were caught in Kaduna. Nobody is saying Yoruba Yahoo Yahoo boys or Ibo Yahoo or Ijo Yahoo Yahoo boys and what have you, things like that. Should we, and again, going by the kind of lasers that are speaking out, because look at Fast Orientis, the troop to Fast Orientis' house. It took Tinubu to say when Evans was kidnapped, was Evans and the full animal, or was he a hat, a hat man, yes, or what have you, things like that. That is a national problem. Again, we see even people who, who write to the president. It took the owner of Ife to say, look, it's a national problem. Let's not look at it. Should we be regionalizing and politicizing uh, certain, certain national issues? No, certainly it shouldn't be. Uh, insecurity is a national problem, mm -hmm. all right? And it is it cut across all, regardless of tribe, party, or ethnicity. Mm -hmm. But the fact still remains that we must accept that there is an insecurity challenge in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, don't forget, the present president came on three things, or rather was voted in on that three platform, to fight corruption, mm -hmm. to fight insecurity, and uh, boost to, the economy. to boost the economy. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, at the risk of sounding immodest, the truth of the matter is that mm -hmm. there, is, seems, there seems to be a failure in terms of fighting insecurity. Yes, of course, the bombing here and there that we used to have may have reduced 
uh, minimally, mm. all right? But as it stands now, there's insecurity everywhere. Now, the president himself, even his own village, Daura, the district head of his village was kidnapped. It took them a lot of effort before his freedom was regained. Who are those that kidnapped him? That is the president's village. The president state, in fact, the governor came out to say, look, we are in Even trouble. In government house. Even in government it. house, every time. The, the citizens were carrying corpses to the Emir's palace. Look, we are tired of this killing here and there. That is the president's state. So that means that there are, there's an issue that must be addressed. That's, with this. that's the state Mr. President is going, oh, to, yeah. said he's going to retire. Exactly. To. So that means that there's an issue that needs to be addressed holistically. It mustn't be given any political coloration, mm -hmm. regional coloration. And the issue, when too many people are beginning to draw the consciousness of the president to the fact that this insecurity thing is becoming alarming, mm -hmm. then he should call for worry, mm -hmm. and the president should take proactive uh, step. Yeah. That is just my thinking. Well, well uh, again, because it, this is quite an issue, because we've discussed this severally. Uh, Mr. President was known to have spent virtually all his life in Kaduna, Absolutely. as it is. But as we speak today, uh, Mr. President seems to have abandoned even Kaduna That's in terms of security. And he keeps talking about he will be withdrawing, he will be retiring uh, to Katina. But the Katina now has become in, uh, a, a killing field, and almost on daily basis. A shooting mean, range, actually. Well, <laughs> it's, it's sad. Dairu. Uh, the issue is, uh, let me pick up from uh, where as I mm. dropped. The issue of uh, adopting the uh, the emir of uh, Dona. Yeah, yeah, the Magajingari of Dona. When this those guys were Dona. arrested, mm. the revelation, the, the the information they gave is so scary because they said they picked him from Daura yeah. to Kasena. Hmm. Before asking the question, from Daura to, to from Kasena to, to uh, uh, no, Kano, from mm. Kano to Jigawa, from Jigawa to Yobe, hmm. from back Yobe to, back, back, to, back to, Kano. to Kano, from Kano to Abuja. They brought him back from Abuja six days before hmm. they were being arrested. You see, the so they kept moving him. Moving him. Him. You can imagine. If, if, and nobody could track. That, that's exactly. it. The question is, exactly. if you're traveling from here to, let's say, maybe uh, within the uh, a northwest uh, zone. Mm. If you're moving from Kaduna to either Zaria or Kano, yeah. you'll be stopped more than, not more than like uh, uh, less than three to five, well, uh, five times. Mm, mm, five mm, times. Yeah. And they will be cautioning you. Where's your driver's last one? The question you ask, which route does those, uh, those that, guys oh, where they fly? Do, do you understand? <laughs> this is the question. So I think, Ablazis, this security issue is something that we should be very, very much serious about. Mm. Somewhere, somehow, someone is not doing his work job effectively. Exactly, exactly. All right. Exactly. Uh, someone somewhere is not doing his job effectively. And uh, we see uh, somehow, somewhere, the name of uh, General Abderrahman Dambazo is not on the list. But exactly. So could that be the reason? The name of uh, uh, Manir Dang Ali, another retired general, is not on the list. So uh, could this be an indictment? Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at the ministerial list submitted by the president to the Senate. Don't go away, we won't be right back.
joining us. Well, you've missed the first two topics. We looked at two issues we looked at. Uh, the sustained protest by the uh, IMN, that is the Islamic Movement of Nigeria members, popularly known as Shiite. And then the latest, what? It has become latest now. You know, somebody said, why blame Obasanjo for writing an open letter? He's a graduate of an open national open university. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, we're having a lot of letters there. <laughs> now, the letter of uh, the Alafi of Uyo Oba Lamidi Adeyemi to the president as far as security is concerned. Well, um, the next issue is the, if you are not aware, well, 43 names have been submitted, nominees, ministerial nominees have been submitted by the president to the Senate. Uh, among them, we have people who will be coming back. It might interest you to know uh, that Muhammad Musa Bello, the immediate past minister of uh, FCT from Adama, is on the list. Uh, Chris Ngigi, <laughs> the man who said, doctors living in Nigeria will make dollar bring to Nigeria, <laughs> so he's not brain drained. From Anambara, is coming back. You have Adamo Adamu, that prolific writer, who is the Minister of Education. People say they are not seeing the effect of the writing in that ministry, at least in the last four years. From Bauchi State, is on the list. Uh, you have Mustafa Babashi Uri from Borono State coming back. Obonoya Onu from Eboyu State. Uh, Osagi Edahere, the immediate past Minister of State Health, is coming back. Uh, Geoffrey Onyama, immediate past Minister of Foreign Affairs, is on the list. Ali Isapantemi from Gombe State. Uh, Suleiman Adamu. Okay, Ali Isapantemi was not actually a he minister. Was, he Sorry. Was DG he was DG. DG. Yes. Uh, well, you have him on the list. Uh, you have Suleiman Adamu from Jigawa. Uh, water Resources, Immediate Past Minister of Water Resources. Uh, Zainab Ahmed Shemsuna from Kaduna. You have Hadi Sirika. Well, Nigerian Airways, maybe Nigerian, Nigerian Airs. Probably this time around it will be a reality. Uh, from, from Katina, you have Abu Bakr Malami, the Immediate Past Attorney General uh, from Kebi. Uh, Lai Mohammed, <laughs> Kwara. Well, it, my interest to know that in addition to Lai Mohammed, you have Bemi Sola Sarachi. The, the younger sister to <laughs> Bukola Saraki is on the list. Raji Fashola uh, Baba Meta, they call him. I don't know if this time around the president will allow him the three ministries. Uh, of course, the big one, Rotime Amechi. Some people say if, if his name is not there, they will doubt the list. Well, <laughs> he's there on the list from uh, uh, Rivers. I think those are some of the people uh, among the old uh, ministers who, whose name made the list. Well, Nairo. You had the list. What do we make of this new list? Uh, really, uh, we, we, we have probably we need to add. We have Akume from Benue, Benue. Uh, making the list. We have Paul in Talent from Plateau uh, making the list. We have Akpabio. Actually, for one thing, uh, mm. uh, I think uh, last uh, regime it took uh, the same person six months to. Yeah, and now less. Now less than two months. Uh, Is that the record? Now we have, uh, <laughs> I think, PT or P two one days. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm. And uh, when there was so much pressure, even the man said he was uh, under pressure that, uh, uh, on the issue of uh, ministerial uh, nomination. But he said categorically that uh, he's going to appoint those uh, he, he knows personally. personally. And I said it, and I will still uh, say it again, that uh, the issue of uh, ministerial nomination or uh, appointment mm. should not be based on uh, the personal relationship for what reason. Because what we have seen during the last hour, uh, the first ten you know, of uh, the president uh, Buhari, uh, the regime, last, four, the last think, four years, four years. Mm. I think there is no more, uh, no much uh, to to write home about. Mm. And uh, the present people have been expecting may come up with people that are very capable, and credible. You understand? And at the end of the day, we see him repeating the same people, reappointing more than I think about 70% of uh, the past uh, cabinet. So to me, to me, no, there's for, nothing for, to- 14 uh, of them. 14 of them. Yeah. To me, there's nothing to, of, uh, to, to, to celebrate. Because if the same crop of uh, minister that led the uh, previous, uh, or rather the last uh, poets uh, mm. are still coming back, I think we're not expecting much because it's just like a continuation of uh, the, the the regime, and I said it. If Buhari will uh, look at uh, the issue of uh, this ministerial appointment critically and based on uh, competency, we have Obasanjo. When Obasanjo came, the issue is he brought competent people that uh, have been uh, uh, 
very much capable. You and I will not deny the fact that uh, people like uh, Ugo, uh, Ugozi Ukenjo Wela and uh, Dr. Obi and uh, uh, this uh, additional, uh, the, who is the chairman, I think president of the African Development Bank now. Mm. These people, you cannot deny the fact that these people are very much capable and some of them, he doesn't know them personally. Like he picked uh, Nkombo from Gombe when he was a counter general of the state under the uh, APC government, and he was picked based on the, the commendation and his uh, part degree. So I think we should not be co considering personal relationship in issue that has to do with the progress and development of uh, Nigeria as a nation. And the, the, the nature of uh, all the caliber of people we have seen here, I think uh, we're not expecting much, actually. That's my personal uh, well, well, perception. Trinji, let's go to those who didn't come back. Before we even mm -hmm. talk about those who came back, we saw Mansef Dang Ali, Minister of Defense, didn't make the list. We saw the Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Dambazo, who did not make made the list. Could this be an indictment on their performance in the last four years, especially with the security challenges we are facing, both within and without? Salaam Andalou. Close. Yeah, Salaam. Yeah, well, we'll come here. <laughs> 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 uh, let's not forget, how do we to not make it back? Yeah, no, let, let's, let's start from the defense. Well, from the defense aspect, mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's... Uh, I don't want to say it's unfortunate, but uh, okay. I think these are the people that have taken the fall, you know, for the failure, or I don't want to say failure, but for the security um, issues that we have faced. Yeah. Uh, you know, lots of people were clamoring for the change in uh, service chiefs and all that. And as that did not happen, I mean, um, some people just had to take the bite the bullet, and it happened to be um, these two ex generals. Um, I don't want to say it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's an indictment, but we're expecting that, um, or, or I would want to say that it's just, um, well, the shake-up, people were expecting the shake-up to happen in the armed forces itself, but instead, uh -huh. it happened from the bureau, mm -hmm. you know, well, from the bureaucratic it, it, it side. Started. But it has started. Yeah. That is the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about the list generally, I, I, well, I, nothing can be absolute. Let's just put it, I have my reservations. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I have said my reservations here in the studios about um, about the list itself. I just feel that um, some of the names that were got on that list, well, um, a reward for how some of them actually conducted themselves during the elections, the general elections. Some of uh, the list, the names on that list, were people that really stood their ground for President Muhammad Buhari during the general, last general election. So, I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping that um, this time we'll see an improvement. Let's not continue to do the same things over and over again well, and be expecting a different, a different result. Result. Okay, Azar. Okay, I mean, you are a sport person. That long didn't even make it back. Well, Just the way out of bed, didn't make it back. And you, uh, if, if we are talking about people, Buari was saying about people he knows personally. We know the way Buari knows that long. Long before now, he one did not on only one, know him. Even that long by himself said there is no he way. Was he, was, he was not going he to come. He was so certain about mm. it, and now he didn't make the list. Now, simply put, it's not impossible that perhaps, mm. you know, there were a lot of issues that surround the performance of Solomon Dalong. Yeah, in, on, now, the insecurity issue, too, mm. except that the president has refused to change the security architecture by virtue of extending extending the service, the, the tenors of the service teams and all of that. But simply put, the fact that Ali didn't come back, Dambazo, so very close to the president, also yeah. didn't come back, mm. there is no better way to put it than to say that perhaps he was not satisfied with yeah. their performance. That is my thinking. Okay. I may be wrong. But be that as it may, yeah. just like uh, Mr. Tunji did say, mm -hmm. I mean, it really doesn't make too much of a sense, you know, if you are returning back uh, quite a number of those that served with him in the first term. Well, I don't know. But of course, like I said, he has his reason for doing what. But what? I had said, and I want to reiterate it here, mm -hmm. that it doesn't really matter who he brings on board. The fact is that all that Nigeria wants is to have I mean, good governance, all right? Nigeria want good governance at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Not putting people that have nothing to do with sport to man the sport affairs. Or putting somebody that has nothing to do, for instance, mm -hmm. I mean, tell me for God's sake, what has son got to do with power? What has son got to do with housing? What has son got to do with, I mean, those are some of the issues. Okay. So the president must appoint technocrats to positions where they fit in the best. Okay. That is the point. All right. For our effective time salary, is, yeah, time salary is fast spent as it is. We just had barely two minutes. That I recommend to you. The, the last time we saw president was forced to appoint ministers from one from each state forcefully. 
He said let for him he wouldn't even have gone round all the 36 states. But now he did not go beyond just the 36 states. He also appointed eight from each geopolitical zone. For instance, from the southeast, Anambara had two. Uh, Chris Ngege and Sharon Ike as well. Uh, from the north central northeast, we have Adamo Adamo and Mariam Katagum, both of Bauchi. them from Bauchi. Incidentally, from the same senatorial uh, district. Uh, from the northwest, we have uh, Zainab Ahmed Shemsuna and Mohamed Mahmoud, both of them from Kaduna. Uh, you go to the north central, you have Lai Mohammed and Bemisha Lasaraki, both of them from Kwara. You go to the southwest, you have uh, Raji Fashola and uh, Nimbe Mar Mamora, okay. both of them from Lagos. Only the south south, as it is, does not get an addition uh, to, ra to that. What do we make of this in a minute? Actually, I don't know uh, what uh, his reason might be, because actually the Constitution has uh, given him provision to, uh, I think, appoint uh, uh, 39 uh, ministers. ministers and. Uh, I'm not conversant with the law uh, regarding the yeah. appointment. And the FCC is not represented here. It's it not is. represented. And the, if he, he has done that to balance the, the appointment, mm. as you rightly said, I think there was uh, this uh, zone that is being shortchanged yeah. for one reason, I don't know. And secondly, there was uh, this issue that uh, he has prerogative powers to maybe pick one person from each from zone. Each, yeah. If that should be the case, or if that was what he considered, I think one geopolitical zone has been short I don't south. know the reason. South-South yeah. south has not been yeah. taken care of, has not been mm -hmm. covered. I don't know, but all the same, we're wishing him well, and we hope to see a different ball game this time around because we have uh, started with issue of security. A lot of things have been Okay, about well, security. Mashir Magashi is a retired uh, military officer from Kano. Magashi from Kano. Yes. I don't know, maybe you take the, like, uh, the as I said, yeah. let's be the, uh, the issue of uh, considering those that are very professional mm. in their own ministry. Yeah. You should not pick someone that has military background to send him to sport. Mm. Despite the fact that he may be flying yeah, to sport well, as well, a military. Be, yeah. But the issue is, you cannot take someone that red law to uh, uh, Ministry of Works, it Power, you don't understand? You cannot, you cannot expect performance and uh, uh, the good output. Out, output. Okay, uh, I, I, I think in the days ahead we will do analysis of this, especially by the time uh, the Senate sits and let's see who will be cleared and who will not be cleared. Hoping this time around we will not have those with fake uh, NYC discharge certificate or those who are supposed to go to service and decided to go to a house of assembly. I think, I think, it's, safe, uh, I think to, it's safe to say these are the ministers. It's yeah. <laughs> safe to say these yeah. are the ministers. Uh, let, let, uh, we hope the National Assembly will do justice to Ray. Let's uh, not have a repeat of what we had. Uh, the, because even she did not resolve. He didn't have to Because instead of going for service, he decided to go went to the National Assembly. <laughs> so, hoping the National Assembly will do the right thing this evening. From my immediate right, yeah. Isaiah Benjamin, the bureau chief of leadership newspaper. Sir, Thank, Thank you, you for having me. It's my pleasure well, always. Twinji, uh, sorry. Twinji Oyeleke, sorry. Twinji Oyeleke, and Dairu, as a chair of Daylight Reporters. Dairu, oh, my, list needs to, uh, my name after, needs to make the next list. After the November important. election, hopefully maybe your name will make the list. There you are. Thank you for investing your time with us. Well, on this program, we say it beyond the headlines. Hoping you enjoy the program. We shall be here on Saturday, God willing, to do justice to another topic. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Good evening.